Good morning. So um, let's continue our study of 1 Corinthians 14. We're going to look today at uh, chapter 14, verses 13 through 20. I think it's 25. Um, yeah, 25. Let me share my screen. There we go. And uh, here we are with 1 Corinthians 14, 13 to 25. You'll notice that Paul starts out for this reason. That brings us back to the previous section, if you remember. In the previous section, what we discovered was that Paul creates, uh, or he explains the difference between tongues and prophecy, saying specifically that tongues is something that uh, we do to God primarily. Prophecy is something that edifies, encourages, and comforts the church. Now, for this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret what they say. And Paul immediately begins to give reasons for that. Because, for, and then Paul says, if, new relationship, if I pray in a tongue, then my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So what shall I do? I'll pray with my tongue, but I'll also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I'll also sing with my understanding. Um, do you see what it is that Paul is doing here? He is presenting this difference between praying with my spirit and praying with understanding. Sing with my spirit, sing with understanding. He uses the word but. There is a contrast here. If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but there's no fruit for my mind. So Paul is saying, do both. Pray with your spirit. Pray in tongues, but also pray with understanding. Sing in tongues, but sing with understanding. Otherwise, and here comes the explanation, when you're praising God in the spirit, how can someone else who's now put in the position of an inquirer say amen to your thanksgiving? since they don't know what you're saying. You're giving thanks well enough, but no one else is edified. So in all of this section, all of these first several verses, Paul is presenting the contrast between unintelligible and intelligible. And then he comes back and he gives his personal example. He says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you, but, and he follows that same formula, in the church, during a service, when we are together, I'd rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Now, Paul continues this contrast but now in a slightly different vein. Brothers and sisters, stop thinking like children in regard to evil be infants, but in your thinking be adults. And then he quotes the book of Isaiah. And what he quotes here uh, we'll get this set up. There we go. There we are. Okay. 
with other tongues and through the lips of foreigners, I'll speak to this people, but even they will not listen to me, says the Lord. So Paul continues, he uses Isaiah, prophecy from Isaiah, to talk about unintelligible, unintelligibility. So uh, he does that, and then he comes back to his main uh, his main topic. As a result of all of this, then, tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. Now, personally, I think he may be hearkening back to uh, the use of tongues in Acts chapter 2, when there were unbelievers present who heard in their own language. Prophecy, however, which is another word for contrast, is not for unbelievers, but for believers. So you see this contrast. And then Paul continues this vein of thought, saying if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues and inquires or unbelievers come in, won't they say that you're out of your mind? But if an unbeliever or an inquirer comes in while everyone is prophesying, they're convicted of sin and are brought under judgment by all as the secrets of their hearts are laid bare. So, as a result, they will fall down and worship God, exclaiming God is really among you. So what is it that Paul is saying in this passage? Simply that there's a difference between tongues and prophecy. That tongues are unintelligible, prophecy is understandable. That tongues are for unbelievers, that prophecy is for believers. And remember from the previous passage, it's for unbeliever, uh, for believers to strengthen. Encourage and to comfort. I'll do this. Those are the primary difference that Paul lays out between the two. Paul seems to talk about uh, his own use of tongues, which probably is in what today we call a prayer language. But he says that in the church, I would rather speak five words of prophecy that are understandable than 10,000 that are unintelligible. Now, tomorrow we'll come back and we'll see specific content that Paul uh, uses for the gift of prophecy and why he does that.